welcome to another episode of Strategic Minds Making Money Moves, where we talk about those strategies to be what? Get that green. I am excited today. I have an awesome guest, Gabrielle Devine. She is a makeup artist and has a wonderful company, and we're going to talk a little bit about expansion, what it means, how we move forward in her business. Welcome, Gabrielle. Thank you so much for having me. It's my pleasure. I'm, I'm so glad you're here. Thanks for having me. So would you please share with our audience a little bit about your business? Sure. Um, my name is Gabrielle Devine. I am the CEO of Gift of Gab, LLC. I am a professional makeup artist based out of Atlanta, Georgia, and I do travel, just in case. <laughs> um, I've been doing makeup professionally for 10 years. I started in high school and I love what I do and I do it every day. I work with uh, different people. Um, uh, I work with different professionals. Uh, I work with news anchors. I work with celebrities. I work with the everyday woman. I work with anyone who needs makeup. You need makeup and I'm there. <laughs> All righty then. That's awesome. So when we start to talk about um, about makeup and you're talking about your organization, share with the audience what you would like to discuss from a st strategic perspective today. From a strategic perspective, I think about when I first got in the industry and I really didn't have anyone to turn to, to in terms of telling me what I needed to do to become a makeup artist or the direction to go. So I am interested in expanding Gift of Gab and actually having a makeup agency. All right, so now we're talking about growth. We're talking about business growth. How do we move forward and how do we get others in? Now I want you to think about something that you said um, when you first started. You've been doing makeup since you were in high school. Ding, ding, target audience high schoolers. Mm. So you get high schools that are getting ready, got high schoolers that are getting ready to graduate. And you work even within their counselor offices to say, look, if there's anybody who is interested um, in taking on a career in a profession in makeup, I'm here. Mm. Right? You can be a mentor, you can be, you can train them, you can teach them, they could be an employee. Um, in terms of moving forward to expand your company so it's not just you doing it, but you only have so many hours in a day. And if you travel, who's going to do your other clients? So that's how you begin to build and grow. Okay. So you already said your first target audience is, is um, high school. Let's fast forward. So now there are some young women that go, you know, I'm going to go to cosmetology school. I want to learn it all. I want to learn how to do makeup. I want to learn how to do hair. I want to learn how to do nails. I want to do all of it. I really want to go to cosmetology school. I see another opportunity. Mm. Let's go to those cosmetology schools and let people know if you are graduating and you have the certifications, you have the degree, now you don't have to teach them. Now you actually begin to talk to them about how you operate within your business. Guess mm. what? You gave them a job. So now they're employed. So now you take on more clients and now you have those other people help you with taking on those clients. Fast forward. Now let's say people have their own business. There might be another makeup artist out there that has their own business that's moving forward. And you know, you know what? I would really like to, I love how they do makeup. I would love to have them help me with my clients to expand. So now I'm gonna do a 1099 to their mm. company. I do a 1099 to their company, and I the client pays me, I pay them their fee, I get the money, the the margin on it, and now I've made money, not even doing the work. Right? Right. So now I have an opportunity where I have expanded my business, I got growth, I charged a hundred dollars, only had to play the makeup artist 75, I made $25 for every makeup artist that does it right? So you begin to get residual income. So there are multiple streams of how you can continue to build. Now, the thing about an agency and being known as an agency is you have to have more than one that people understand have the same skill set you do mm -hmm. so that they don't call and say, Gabrielle, I know that you, you do makeup and I know you got these other people. I don't want them. I, I want, want you. you. And then what happens is everybody won't you and nobody grows. 
So then you have to work with the issue that says somebody calls and says, you know, I'm looking for a makeup artist. I have a great person on my team. I'd like to introduce her to you. She's been through my development. We use the same methodologies, the same frameworks, et cetera, in terms of how to do makeup. I would love to have her uh, come to, to do makeup with you. The other thing is that you may, sometimes when you're trying to do that transition, mm -hmm. when people are like, I just love my Gabrielle, don't send me nobody else. So don't send me anybody else, I want Gabrielle to see it. <laughs> but when they say, I love my Gabrielle, I don't want anybody else, you might have to bring somebody with you. Mm. Let them do it while you're there so that the client then begins to build trust. Now I can do that transition, mm -hmm. right? Now, we talk about being that we're able to travel. How are people going to know in other cities outside of where you are that you can travel, that you can do that, right? That you're willing to go anywhere to help somebody who needs makeup mm -hmm. and that you are a travel makeup artist. So we have to begin to market ourselves as global, mm. not local. Okay. We're global, not local. I am a makeup artist that can go anywhere, right? I happen to reside in Atlanta, Georgia but I can go anywhere. Okay. So now I'm going to begin to tell my story, show my reels, get my information out there by going anywhere, mm. right? And letting them know that I have that skill set to do that. You know, have you ever done makeup for any celebrities? Yes. You have? I have. That's awesome. Leverage them. So you did makeup for a celebrity. Now this is big. And we talk about followers. Celebrities have natural followers. Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, whatever it is, they've got some natural followers. And so when you do make up for that entertainer and they get to know you and you say, you know what? I need your help. I just need you to endorse me. I just want to know it's okay for, for you to endorse me so everybody knows that I did your makeup mm -hmm. and I made that happen. You know how quick your followers are going to grow? Mm -hmm. Do you know how quick people are going to say, oh my gosh, you did theirs, you can do mine. Mm -hmm. So we have to leverage relationships that already have followers as well so we can continue to grow and develop. Then you don't have to convince this makeup artist that's coming out of school to come work for you. You did so and so, so I'm coming to work for you. I want that kind of money, mm -hmm. right? I want to be able to do this, right? Yeah. And being able to make that happen. So those are some of the things I think you have to think about as you begin to talk about growth and think about where you're going to get those individuals to work for you as an agency okay. um, in terms to expand your agency, you know, and make that happen. So we want to be able to um, plan a need. You have a need, you want a job, I got a job. Plan an opportunity, mm -hmm. you want to make money, I got clients that I can help you make money with because I'm going to share my time now so I don't have to do it all, mm -hmm. right, to begin to learn. And three, you don't know, I have the classes to be able to teach you so that you can learn mm. if you're at that spot. So now I have three segmented audiences as I move forward. We're gonna take a station break and when we come back, we'll talk about a few more tips. We'll be right back. Strategic Minds, Making Money Moves with Vicki Wright Hamilton focuses on helping entrepreneurs to overcome their business challenges to help increase their bottom line. Each episode provides strategies for growth and transformation. Watch Vicki share her 20 plus years of experience as a corporate executive to help entrepreneurs level up. Welcome back. As we were talking, we were actually talking about how do you grow your business and how do you go from being a solopreneur to actually get being an agency and what that looks like. I'd love to ask you, have you ever um, met anyone that does makeup that you follow? I have. I've met um, a couple of people and I've taken some of the people who I follow. I've taken some of their classes. Okay. All right. Is there anybody that you follow that really knows you? Yes. Really? Mm -hmm. Okay. So have you talked to them? Um, I have talked to them, but I haven't, like earlier um, in our talk, you were saying like um, asking people like, to endorse you and building on relationships. And I haven't asked anybody, you know, to like really endorse me or build, like I have a personal relationship with them, but I haven't really put it to use. And why not? That's a good question. Okay. Okay. 
that's all right. We can pick up from where we are. And because you know them, you can ask them now. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I'm trying to grow. I'm trying to develop. I want to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. um, I, that's something that as you do every client, always be willing to get a testimony. Right? Oh, yeah. Always be willing to get a testimony. Okay. I get a testimony in day. But always be willing to get a testimony. <laughs> because there's nothing like how you make somebody feel. Mm. You know, we all, when we get made up and we'll dress nice and we feel pretty and we feel good and it's, oh my gosh, I'm on top of the world, yeah. right? It's that feeling, it's that engagement mm -hmm. that I'm more confident because you allowed me to feel pretty. Mm. You allowed me to feel good. And that's what it's about, right? Getting to those feelings. When it, Don't think a man don't like to look good either. Oh, he does. And we know that when we get on camera <laughs> and we get that makeup on as, as, our, as um, news anchors and actors, and all, they want to look good too. They want to be handsome. Mm -hmm. They want all that to go and they want to look good in their clothes. And so it, it's applicable to everybody. Okay. It's not just some people, right? So when you begin to get those um, testimonies, make sure you get a variety. The men, the women, the, you know, as, as you're continuing to move forward. And then I think the other thing is, is you talked about um, the individual woman that I can, I do, you know, professionals, I do the individual woman. And I will tell you one of the biggest challenges is that um, I love makeup. I love how it makes me look. I don't have time to do this stuff. I just, is like, I got to get up and do this every day. Oh, no, 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 I'm no, good. no, no. Yeah. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I can't do that. But then I don't feel as good. Because I feel better when I have my makeup on mm -hmm. and, and when I'm looking decent. And it's like, oh, my gosh, you know. I'm feeling myself. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So what would you tell the working woman about, it's not just about having somebody travel to you on special occasion. It can also be about classes to you mm -hmm. for every day. For every day. And learning, um, the one of the biggest things is learning how to do your own makeup, even if it's not extensive. Like Ms. Vicky was saying, takes you so far. It can really boost your day and it starts your day on a good foot. So I do offer classes and I say that honestly, every woman should take a makeup class. Even if you don't wanna wear makeup every day, something where if you wanna step out special or if you wanna have like a girl's night or a date night, that's like important to helping you feel good and helping your night come together. I also say that I think you should do it with friends. So one of my big things is like bridal parties, uh, birthday parties, uh, women's like sleepovers. Like that's the perfect time to engage in learning how to do your makeup and doing it with the people that you love and care about. Okay, now I like that idea when we talk about, you know, having women over and, and girls' nights and all that kind of, especially during COVID when we're in these small little circles, right? And they're coming over and, you know, you're, you're having glasses of wine and talking mm -hmm. and, and all that. And it's like, look, Gary, I need you to come over. Can you help me, te you know, teach us how to put the basics of, of makeup on that doesn't take 10 hours, right? Yeah. And that I don't go up here and, and, and now my, my makeup is all up my eyes. Trying to clean it up. <laughs> and a, a good brow. Yeah. A good brow, a good lip, and a pair of strip lashes will take you far. Okay. A good brow, a good look, a pair of strip lashes. Okay, now those strip lashes, I don't know how y'all put those on, because I, I can't, my lash be up here or down here. <laughs> I don't know how you get that right. So I even tried the magnetic ones where you put them on and try to do the magnetic. Put, put the liner on first, yep. I like to get that. I, I'm not, this does not look like Gabrielle when she does it. So <laughs> therefore, we won't be wearing up because <laughs> they all over my eye, you know, in terms of, in terms of moving forward. So let's talk a little bit about, um, you know, we do talk about having girls' nights. We talk about these kinds of events, et cetera. And when you sit back and think about it, people can use makeup at any point in time, right, to do anything. To do anything. Whether it's a date, whether it's a, um, whether you're getting married, whether it's a special event, whether it's something that you're doing special for your mate or your significant other, right? Mm -hmm. You know, I want to be special tonight. You know, I want him to come home and see a new me, yeah. right? Whatever that may be. I'm trying to spice things up as, as you're moving forward. So there's so many different reasons and occasions that one of the things I like you to think about is what do you call that special outing package? Hmm. So I'm going to sell a bundle hmm. that gives you three special outings. It can be a birthday, anniversary, or whatever. 
and you have a year to use it. Here's what the bundle costs and it allows you the opportunity for me to travel to you. Mm. Right. And here's how the payment happens when you do that. You sell enough of those of where you're going, then you begin to boost more of that income that you want to use to build this agency and actually move forward. One of the benefits that you have is that you're not paying for brick and mortar. You're going to where people are. When you're training people, they can come to you, you know, in terms of training so you can train. And then there's also, you know, dealing with webinars and and things like that where you're actually teaching now, let's do this, let me see you do that, mm -hmm. let's do this, let me see you do that, that kind of thing, so that you're actually giving more of that education, especially as you're bringing in those new people, the high school students, you know, the, the ones that didn't go, didn't decide to go to cosmetology school, but they want to do it. Also, college students. Now, we yeah. all know yeah. about college students. We're going to take a station break. When we come back, we're going to talk a little <laughs> bit about that college arena and how we can grow in that area. We'll be right back. Strategic Minds, Making Money Moves, with Vicki Wright Hamilton, focuses on helping entrepreneurs to overcome their business challenges to help increase their bottom line. Each episode provides strategies for growth and transformation. Watch Vicki share her 20 plus years of experience as a corporate executive to help entrepreneurs level up. Welcome back. We were talking about those colleges and college students. Now, we all know that all colleges, college girls, you know how they are. Mm -hmm. They're trying to get out there, enjoy, have fun, go to the parties. And the question becomes, what are you offering to that college student? Even right here in Atlanta that says, if you want somebody to come and do your makeup, or if you want to get a class to do your makeup so you can do your weekends on your own, mm -hmm. I'm willing to offer one. And here's what I offer. I offer it by website. I offer it in person. I offer it so that mm. you are now growing those college students that now want to follow you. So that even when they become professionals, you already got them in your hip pocket. Mm. They're a client of mine. They're out there being a professional, and now they really want to come to me, right? Yep. Because they know what I'm able to do. Because mm. it's not like being in college, because we all around all the women and the men and, you know, trying to make that happen and trying to look for a significant other. Yeah. Um, doesn't matter, partner, doesn't matter. It's that we want to look our best, and everybody's trying to, you know, fill that gap. So I would encourage you that even here in Atlanta, there's a number of schools, as we all know. Mm -hmm. um, and when you start to think about um, things of moving forward and helping them, you know, that's another segment that you can go to. And guess what your door in is? Sororities, <laughs> right? Look, yes. Yes. Sororities have conventions. Sororities come together. Mm. They have outings. They have events. What would it be? for a sorority on a college campus to have an event and you do 30 girls, 40 girls, 50 girls. Think about mm -hmm. the magnitude, right? And you can do, you don't have to charge as much when you can to help them meet people. where they are because of all the quantity you're mm -hmm. getting. And you bring the people who are in your agency that you're training with you to come and help you. Mm -hmm. Now you've got multiple people stacking out more and more people as they're getting ready to go to this event and look good, right? Yes. Isn't that what it's yes. all about? Yes. Right, right. So don't forget about your sororities um, as, you're, as you're doing that as well because that door is open. You know, um, there's always regional meetings, you know, there's conferences, there's workshops and talking to sororities ahead of time about their events and saying, look, I would love to be um, a sponsor at your at your national convention. Mm. Um, and I provide um, makeup and, you know, I can hand, you know, I um, can do individuals. I can do speakers. I can um, help attendees. I can help anybody kind of thing. Get your name in there you know, in terms of moving forward so that you're opening up other avenues. Yes. Right? Yes. Um, and then uh, what's going to happen is, I'm just telling you, Gabrielle, what's going to happen is you're going to have so much business, you're not going to have enough people to come and satisfy them, and then you're going to be like, okay, I'm trying to hire people, hire people, hire people, hire people, because <laughs> I got so much business. I receive that's it. That's what we want. <laughs> I receive it. <laughs> that's what we want, to build that agency to continue to move forward. So I'm really excited about the avenues that you're offering and the packages that you're offering. And I think that this agency can definitely come together. I think you just have to put the strategies in place. 
um, and begin to take your business to that next level. Yes. And don't be afraid to take a little slice at a time. You don't have to do the, boil the ocean, right? And don't be afraid to do partnerships and looking at that avenue as to how you can move forward to help one step at a time, right? So, um, and I already know you deal with photographers and others as well. So those are other avenues where you're expanding. And then when people get hooked, they get hooked. It's yeah. like, I don't want anybody else, yeah. right? Um, and uh, you end up selling yourself that way. So let's see if we have a question or a comment from the audience. Okay, so I am Ida from To Every Mom on Instagram and TikTok. And my question for you, because I have to be on camera so often, is how, if I'm not a person who's all into makeup, how can I do my makeup fast enough, but gorgeous enough <laughs> so that I can be on camera. So what's your tip to do it quick, but not painful? So my tip honestly is to stick to the basics. You want clean skin, so a light foundation, a easy powder, a good brow, um, a nice eyeliner if lashes aren't your thing, and a nice lip. Just really, really basic. You don't have to do a lot. Um, your foundation, you just need good coverage, good eye shaping, um, and a good lip. Those are your main points. Like, so you don't have to take a lot of time. A good 10 to 15 minutes will get you in and out. 15 minutes, now I can get with that. <laughs> <laughs> Not too a long. A good 15 minutes. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. So I have a question when it comes to that. How do you know which color lipstick to wear? Is it have to be matchy matchy? Does it, are you supposed to wear whatever you're accenting? Or, or, or how do you know what lips? Because everybody talks about a good lip, but the struggle is which color? So when I say a good lip, I mean a lip that makes you feel comfortable and confident. So a lip that you like and prefer, it doesn't have, it doesn't have to be a certain color, but I think about your lips as being the art for your face. That is going to be the color for your face if you don't have any other color. So nude might be your color. If, that, if that's what makes you feel confident and good, then nude is a good lip for you. Um, red might be your color. Red makes me feel good. So I like wearing red. I enjoy it. Pink might be your color. Pink looks great on you. It reflects wonderful on you and orange. So those might be some really good lips for you. I think um, you just need to try on. It's okay to go to a Mac store, a NARS store and say, hey, can I just try these colors and try on a different lipstick until you find the one where you say, this makes me feel good. And that's a good lip for you. What about lip gloss? Is our lip glosses out? Should, can, is it okay? Like if I'm, if I'm doing my face and, and I'm putting on that, that natural um, foundation, mm -hmm. you know, and um, I'm getting my lips together and my, uh, my eyes and all of that, it, I, I might like lip gloss. I like so lip gloss lip, too. Do, is lip gloss okay or is that not accepted or? Well, lip gloss is in and lip gloss makes you look a tad bit more youthful depending on what you're doing. So if you need a lip that's going to stay for a long time, you don't want to use a lip gloss. It's going to move. And during like now, during COVID, if you have to wear a lipstick or something up under your mask, you don't want to wear a gloss. It's going to move. It's going to be all over your face. It's going to shift. So when you think about a lip gloss, you're thinking something, um, you're thinking really a moment where you're not going to have to do a lot of touching up and a moment where you can really just shine because that's what lip gloss does. It gives you a shine. Okay. Okay. I always wondered about that in a matte because, you know, you wear a matte and it's not supposed to come off. Mm -hmm. You know, it stays on. But then it's like, oh, I need something that's a little, I, I want that, that glossy that's... kind of feeling. Yeah, yeah, there you go. There you go. <laughs> that glossy kind of feeling and how, you know, so then do I, you put gloss on top of it or? You and know, you can. Of... I was going to say you can always use a little gloss just right here in the middle. And it'll just perk your lips up just a little bit and give you moisture. You don't want to take your gloss all the way to the ends of your lips because a lot of times the small lines, fine lines that we have, will pull it outside of your lip region. Boy, that's great. That's good to know. That's good to know. I um, It's something that, you know, as we begin to learn tips and tricks and trying to move forward and trying to make things happen, you're always trying to be cognizant of what's in, what isn't, what looks right, what doesn't. Because you know me, I'm like, you the expert, you do it. I, I don't have a clue, yeah. right? <laughs> I'm paying you because you're the expert. But, you know, as you're trying to learn to do things on your own, it's really understanding what that is. Um, what's right, what's not, and what looks good and what doesn't. And I think another thing with makeup is patience. 
So you don't want to go or need makeup for something and then decide, oh, that morning I'm going to just now learn how to do makeup. You need to be, that's something you need to practice. So it's okay to practice every day doing something small so that when you do have something that you need makeup for, you're confident and you're comfortable. Awesome. Awesome. Well, I hope you all have learned a lot and have enjoyed this segment as much as I have. Would you please join me in thanking Gabrielle for being here? Thank you so much for coming. I really appreciate all of you tuning in to another episode of Strategic Minds, Making Money Moves, where we have those strategies to get that green. Look forward to seeing you next time.